went over there and hogged these holes out. Um, I need this to swim around a little bit more. These are threaded here. And this whole idea on this fixture, it's it doesn't have to be this. The only reason I'm using what I've got is because it was scrap. And I go over there to the scrap pile and I just grab something that I can find that works. So don't get too keyed into having it like this. You just need this concept like this. That's all you have to come up with. And you don't even need these spreaders. These little bolts back here, these things are um, in existing holes. Now, this these plates were uh, out of the scrap bin exactly like they are with these tapped holes. And um, I thought, well, I might as well utilize them. So the idea behind this thing is that you clamp the the horn in here and you just squeeze it between these plates and um, and then you tighten these bolts here which really could be wing nuts or something a little bit more favorable to tighten so tighten these things up And that gives you a pretty nice pinch on the horn. One of the beauties of having this much weight on this little fixture is, you know, it's it's steady enough. Once you set it down, it it'll sit there. So at this point, I just I just check everything out. I just look to make sure this is at right angles to the the drill rod here. I'm going to make sure it's centered. The nice thing about it, if you want an offset tab, if you bend a horn and you bend it after it's brazed, then it's, sometimes it's hard to figure the offset. But by doing it this way, I can get it right where I want it. So since I'm coming from the bell crank, I'm going to come up from the bell crank into this side of the horn. I might want the tab a little bit this way. I think I'll just go with that and center. Okay, so I get the horn at this point. The next thing I want to do is put some flux on it. Once I get the flux on it, this little magnet sits right there. And the magnet is what's going to hold this horn at, at 90 degrees. So See how you can adjust that. You can put this thing anywhere you want it. And that magnet will hold it tight enough to where you can braise it. So at this point, you can take your time, you know, get it exactly where you want it. And what I do, I really load this thing up with flux. Um, I try to keep the whole horn encapsulated in flux while it's being braised to keep the oxygen off of it. or at least in the center here where it hits the heat. Okay, this uh, 
45% cadmium free Harris. And they sell the corresponding flux that goes with it. White raising flux. Um, six ounces almost last your lifetime. So one of the things I like to do, I've already cleaned the horn. I just wipe the, uh, the braze rod down. I also like to cut off a little bit of the tip that's melted. Start with a unmelted tip. And I'm going to do one more thing before I braise. I'm going to double check this joint. Make sure I'm still at 90. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this up to where it's um, it's going to get sort of a, I don't know how do you call it, sort of clear looking. The flux is going to start to flow. And then once the, the metal starts to turn sort of an orange, orangish red, is where I'm going to hit it with this wire. What I'm going to do, I'm going to hit both sides of it. So I'm going to work that torch on this side, starting to get really clear, the flux is starting to flow, and uh, hit that side, and tap this side, and that's it. Um, you got to introduce the uh, silver braze to the heat right when this starts to turn a little orange so the flux will go sort of clear glassy it'll really flow get watery looking form a nice coat you'll start to go in the orange phase the brownish orange you introduce that silver braze into that flame sort of preheat it and then once it goes from a darker brown starts to go orange tap it Keep tapping it till it melts. Feed enough, it'll flow completely around that if you heat it right. And then as I move to this side, I can actually see this silver braze wicking to the other side of this horn. And it, you don't have to really worry about more heat. You just torch it over here. You tap it maybe an eighth of an inch in there. Sixteenth. Okay, we're going to see if we can sneak in one more horn here before this battery dies. These GoPros are great, but the batteries don't last long. I got a jumper battery on this thing, and when that goes down, then these small batteries, they don't, they don't give you a whole lot of time. So here we are. It's an elevator horn. It's a dog leg. Um... If you're going to do a horn, you got to make sure you get the dog leg facing the right way. It's easy to reverse it. It's also easy to forget your bushings, bearings. Now this is just uh, propane. You can use map gas. Map gas will go a little bit quicker. But, um, propane's been fine. Another thing to remember when you're brazing or soldering, the flow of the material, whether it be solder or braze rod, will always follow the heat. Um, so as, as the heat moves, 
the solder or braze will follow it. That's just something to keep in mind. So this one looks like a really good joint. They both do. And it's been a long time since I've made these horns. I used to make uh, a lot of them. And I just go back, I just go through there and just, it was, uh, didn't even have to think about it. And then when I started making a few of them here for this airplane, they were fine, but it's just like, well, it took, I lost the touch. So as you can see on this one, this horn, the silver braze came out here a little bit too far. And the silver braze came out here a little bit too far. Um, is this a usable horn? It sure is, but it just goes to show you if you don't do something over and over for a long time, you sort of lose that hand-eye coordination. But after two or three horns, I'm back into the groove here, but it's amazing how quick you uh, lose that touch. So the next step, I won't show it, but um, I'm going to take these in the, the wash tub there and, and soak them in hot water. And this water is just tap water, you know, warm, hot tap water. And um, this flux actually dissolves with uh, water. And you can take a toothbrush or a wire brush and you sort of go over this thing. Um, a lot of times I just bring an exacto or something and just sort of lightly scrape. And these bearings that look like they're locked in there are flux and they sort of are, but you give them a little warm water for a while. And what I do is take the back side of a blade and sort of push on them. They'll click through and, and then you spin them around a little bit and that'll break the flux loose. <laughs> 